In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Cartier Vendôme de Cartier fountain pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. This is the Cartier Vendôme de Cartier fountain pen. This is a very special pen for a lot of reasons. This is essentially the first modern Cartier fountain pen. They produced this pen in 1979. The ballpoint preceded it three years earlier, 1976. Making this a pen this shape into a fountain pen was not easy and you know it took Cartier three years to develop it. Now a bit about Cartier and pens before 1976. Cartier really was more known for embellishing other people's pens. So you know you would find maybe like a Waterman that's been embellished by Cartier. Cartier even sold Parker 51s if you can believe that. They also made just some really you know, insane bejeweled desk sets and pen sets, really, really expensive stuff. This was one of the first, or is there the first pen in the Must de Cartier line, which was sort of their cheaper line, more affordable. I don't know if Cartier made any of those crazy, you know, high jewelry pens during, you know, the late 70s and 80s when this pen was sold in Cartier stores. But anyway, that's interesting that this is sort of the first modern Cartier pen that they ever made, fountain pen rather. And it's a very special pen. I mean, just look at how weird it is. So let's walk through the pen, starting with the design. Actually, let's start with the name of the pen. So it's called the Vendôme de Cartier, which is named after Place Vendôme in Paris which is where Cartier has been located since, I think it's 1899, on Rue de la Paix, after, I think they were originally on Rue d'Italiens or something like that. But anyway, they've been there for over 100 years. And for those that haven't been to Paris, you know, Place Vendôme is a very fancy square. The original Ritz Hotel is there where Coco Chanel lived, and, you know, they have... Patek Philippe and all these really high-end stores, including Cartier. So they named it after Place Vendôme. In terms of the design, basically, and I don't know why they did this, they said, oh, what if we took one of our lighters and uh, translated that shape into a pen? So we have this weird flat oval shape. Obviously, it's much longer than a lighter and thinner than a lighter, but you can kind of see sort of what they we're going for. It's very strange. And there's some other features which are sort of lighter-like, which I will show as we walk through the pen. Now, up top here, we can see at the, the finial. Now, the finial on this pen has a special function, which I'll show you in a minute. We can see the 2C Cartier logo there, and it says uh, made in France and plaque d'or, so it's gold plate, and there's maybe like a B or something. I'm not exactly sure what that is after there. And then on the face of the finial, we can see Cartier Paris. And there's like a hallmark thingy there that says Pat, I guess it's patented. And then we have the Trinity rings, which is another Cartier signature here. We have the white gold, rose gold, and yellow gold overlapping each other. Really, really nice. Now, I said that the finial has an extra function, and that has to do with the clip, which extends when you push on this. A very cool design, I think. It's a rather thin looking clip. I personally never use it, but a very cool thought process. Um, the clip is just, you know, a gold plated rectangle. There's really nothing to it. Very thin, sits very flat onto the pen. Really nice. And then we have, you know, the, the cap here. This is not a raised thing, but it's a plastic piece here, which is sort of where it snaps onto here, that little black ring. There is a very slight taper, but it's it almost looks, you know, perfectly 
rectangular the shape, but there is a very slight subtle taper here. I'm not 100% sure what you call this finish, but it's a very 1970s finish. I really like it. It has a great texture and it really shines nicely in the light. I, I really like it. And then at the bottom here, we have the serial number for the pen. And this is also the other part that's kind of like a lighter is we have a little thing here. It's like, oh, am I going to put the the gas in here, but no, this is actually how you fill the pen. And so you pull this out and this holds a cartridge, a special cartridge, which I'll show you. It fits in here and there's a little hole in here and then put this back in here and close it up. Actually, I will put a cartridge in now since we're going to be writing with it. This is the box for the cartridges. Now I tried to buy some of these from my local boutique they had about 20 of them and they were all dried up, so they had to order me more. Now, I don't know if they still make these or not, and I can't get them out of the box, uh, but they do still sell them. Um, you know, the, one of the reasons why I'm saying, oh, do they still make them, is because this is an older Cartier box design, must Cartier, but maybe they just, they probably just never changed it. As a comparison, this is what the, the modern box for their refills and things looks like. This is, this is a standard international cartridge, which is what all of Cartier's other cartridge converter pens use. So these, I'm sure they will still make. These, I'm not 100% sure, but Cartier signs their cartridges, which is of course nice, but you can see that the shape is very unusual. It's an oval shape. These do tend to last quite a long time. My pen here has an extra fine nib, so when I fill this pen, I'm writing with it for quite a long time, but this I think does have a decent ink capacity. And so the way that this works, it doesn't matter which way that goes, but you put the knob bit there through the hole, and then you can put this in. And again, this also goes either way. It doesn't really make a difference. Okay. And I probably shouldn't have done that with the cap on. That might have been a mistake. But anyway, Taking the cap off, we have a very st still strange pen here. This is black plastic or resin. Uh, when you're buying one of these, if you buy one of these used, obviously they're gonna be used because <laughs> they haven't made these in a long time. This is an area that can have some wear. So I would look carefully at the pictures for this just because if you're not careful about paying attention to how you're putting the cap on, you can really scuff this with the metal part of the cap. So definitely an area to look out on. So it tapers in this kind of triangle shape and it is flat here. And then we have like a gold ring and then a dip and then sort of a gold shielded, semi hooded nib bit here. The bead is plastic and you can see it kind of points down. It's an interesting hooded design. It's 18 karat gold. Now, one of the things about this pen is the way that you hold it. So this is my you know, natural grip here. Being that this was their first pen that they really produced sort of themselves, modern pen anyway, that they produced themselves. I guess they really wanted to make sure they didn't mess it up. And I have to say they, they didn't. There's, with the pen comes this box, which even though this pen is super old, the current cartridge box still looks the same. Anyway, it comes with this box and this has two nib adjusting wheels, which I think is really cool. So you can see here it says Cartier Paris. And if you look, there's a line here and then on the inside there's a little like notch or nub. And basically there's a slit underneath here so you would put this in here, and now you can turn the nib to make it comfortable. Now, I, I wouldn't do that with the ink cartridge loaded, and also I have this adjusted perfectly to me, but it's super nice that they gave you that. It's really easy to adjust the nib. It's really good. I wish <laughs> that, you know, like the Omos 360 that I reviewed, if those pens had a wheel like that where you could just very easily simply adjust the position of the nib, that pen would have been so much better. 
And so I think it's really cool that Cartier thought to do that. And they give you two of them in case you lose one. Really a nice thing that they they did. So even though this pen looks weird and awkward, it's really actually not an uncomfortable pen, at least not for me. I think that about covers it. Again, 18 karat gold nib. There's no breather hole. There's no marking um, on the nib that you can see while it is hooded. I personally have not taken this pen apart, but it is an 18 karat gold nib. So let's do some measurements. It's roughly 138 millimeters long. I'd say that's 101 millimeters. So it's a very short pen uncapped. This pen, believe it or not, does post and it posts securely. It doesn't post very far down. There's about, I don't know, half a centimeter that you can post it down. So we're about 156, 157 long. Pretty long when posted. It's not crazy long. For instance, here's a Lummi CP1, which is longer. But I, I find it comfortable to use posted. I don't really like posting it just because I'm worried about damaging that finish, but it does post. They put this nice, very subtle taper in there so that you can, in fact, post it. Now, in terms of the weight, and again, this is going to be with a fully loaded cartridge here because I just put one in. So about 13 grams with the cap. We're looking at 23.7 grams. Not a heavy pen. Because it is thin, there definitely does feel some heft to it. There's it definitely doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't look cheap, but it's not a, a super heavy pen, which I think is what you want in a thin pen like this. Now, just to compare it to some other pens, again, we have this Lummi CP1. I have a bigger pen here, Lummi Ion, and a very big pen here, Mont Blanc 149. Here is a Pilot Vanishing Point. So. This is obviously a thin pen. I do find it to be, I think, more comfortable than the CP1 to write with. It comes to gripping this, you really do have, you know, a good amount of spacing, at least between, at least for me, between my, you know, index finger and my middle finger here. It works like a fatter pen, I think. Just as a comparison, here's, you know, my grip with this one. And, this feels a bit more tight or more constrained than the other, than the Cartier. Do the writing sample. Doing that on a paper mind blocker hardcover notebook. These feature a really nice fountain pen friendly paper from Gemund in Germany. For Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. All right, let's go to it. So I like to use this uncapped. This is a Cartier. Vendome to Cartier, and this is Cartier Black. Now, I should say the, the cartridges come in black and blue. They used to have burgundy. I requested to get those, and they did not have them, so they might be gone for good. So I was only able to get black and blue, and this is their black. And this is a extra fine nib, and it writes quite nicely. These pens, at least the couple that I've used, tend to be on the drier side, and this is definitely on the drier side, although it doesn't bother me. It is very smooth. Could experiment with filling up one of the empty cartridges with maybe a more a ink that has maybe more flow. These Cartier inks tend to be pretty average in terms of flow. Now, fast writing. You can see when I start going really fast. It does struggle a little bit. We get little skips here and there. Not a big deal. You're never really going to write that fast. Now, in terms of comfort, I, you know, I keep saying that I think this is a comfortable pen, 
And, I, you know, it's just intuitively it doesn't seem like it would be, but somehow it actually is. In terms of flexibility, this is 18 karat gold, but, I mean, really you get a little variation there. I wouldn't push on it. Uh, I don't think you would be able to get... Uh, replacing this nib I do not think would be super easy, so I just wouldn't bother trying to push on it. Now, in terms of reverse writing, mm, yeah. It does it. I think the position is slightly off and we're drying up because of the way that the nib is turned. Uh oh, now it's giving me a problem up front. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do reverse writing with this. It's definitely on the drier side, but I don't know. I, you know, since I've had I've had this pen. I want to say maybe three months, and I've gone through several of those big cartridges because I really do enjoy writing with this. It is quite a nice pen. So what are my pros and cons for the Cartier Vendôme de Cartier fountain pen? The biggest pro is the unique design here. This is totally unlike any other pen. They put a lot of thought and engineering into this. I love the way that this clip mechanism works. I like that even though it is a weird shaped pen, they give you a wheel to adjust the nib to make sure that it is in fact comfortable. It's, it's really honestly an excellent pen. It's super nicely made as all Cartier pens are, and it's just so unique and weird looking. I absolutely love it. It writes great. It's a pretty awesome pen. Now in terms of cons, there are cons, especially with a weird shape like this you know it's a short pen very small it does post and it does post securely i don't really love doing this because i'm worried i'm going to damage the finish i haven't really so far but it's just not something that i personally like to do um and now i'm scared to take it off see look at that okay now the other con of course is you know, it's a, it's a skinny pen. I do find it to actually be pretty comfortable to use, but some people definitely won't like that. The other downside, of course, is the proprietary cartridges. You can still buy them at the Cartier boutiques. I do not know if they are continuing to make them or if there's a limited supply left. Unclear to me, but, you know, they haven't made this pen for a long time, but I do really like the fact that they still carry these cartridges. Now, that said, when I went to my local boutique, they had about 20 boxes of them and they were all, almost all of them were all dried out and they had to order the new ones. The packaging on the new ones that I got does not look like a current Cartier box, so I don't know. Anyway, there's just a little bit of uncertainty with the future of this, um, but they did make these for a long time and it was a very popular model, I think, for Cartier, so I hope that they will consider continue to support them in the future. You know, these pens, they're not cheap, but they're a bit weird and obscure, so the price isn't too crazy but they're they're still expensive you know for some of the depending on the finish you know ones like this are around three hundred dollars and they can go up from there so not the cheapest pen do you guys have this pen do you like this pen let me know in the comment section below and if you like this video please hit that like button and if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos please hit that subscribe button thank you guys so much and until next time